Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation. We have x to the fifth power minus x to the fourth power minus one equals zero. And we're going to be finding the solutions for this equation. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. For my first method, first of all, I want you to notice that some equations are special. This is a special quintic, so always check these kinds of things. And here's how it goes. I'm going to be adding and subtracting x squared to this expression, and you'll know why in a little bit. So I'm going to add that first, x squared, and then subtract. So our equation is balanced, and now the reason behind this is when I add the x squared to x to the fifth power, the powers are going to be three apart, so I can take out an x squared and get x cubed plus one, which is a sum of two squares, I mean sum of two cubes. And then the rest is also factorable because if you think about it, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one can be factored. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to take out an x squared. That's going to give me x cubed plus 1. And then minus, I'm going to just put this expression inside the parentheses and, you know, just write everything with a positive or plus sign. All right. Now, let's go ahead and focus on how to factor x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. Because factoring x cubed plus 1 is fairly easy, don't you think? So let's go ahead and factor the... Uh, the core tick first. So we have x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. This is a special one because what you can do is you can basically add x squared to this and subtract. And then this part becomes a perfect square because it becomes x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one. And x squared is also a perfect square. So we have difference of two squares. Make sense? So this is x squared plus one quantity squared minus x squared. So now we can go ahead and factor this using difference of two squares. That's going to give us x squared plus 1 plus x, but I can write it as x squared plus x plus 1. And the other factor is x squared plus 1 minus x, but I can also write it as x squared minus x plus 1. So to keep a long story short, this is how you can factor x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. So let's go ahead and substitute these two quadratics into our expression. So let's see how this looks like. I'm going to replace x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1 with this expression right here, the factored form. And then I'll proceed with the factorization of x cubed plus 1. Like I said earlier, this is just a cubed plus b cubed, so that's fairly easy. a plus b and then a squared or a, B, a squared minus AB plus B squared. Okay, that's how you can factor X cubed plus one. And notice that we have a common factor. So that was the whole motivation behind adding the X squared. And like I said earlier, these expressions are very, very special. So now we have X squared minus X plus one being repeated. So we can go ahead and take it out. And now we're going to have the following factors, X squared times X plus one minus the other factors is going to be, let me write that in parentheses first, and then I'm going to distribute, All right? So this is going to be the other factor. Obviously, that's going to be a cubic. Let's go ahead and simplify it. So from here, I get x squared times x, which is x cubed. And then I get x squared, but there's a minus x squared here. They're going to cancel out, so I don't need to worry about it. And then I have minus x minus 1. Great. So since we're trying to solve this equation, we have to set it equal to zero, our quintic, right? So basically, we were able to factor this quintic, right? And the first one is a quadratic, and this is a cubic. How do you solve the cubic? Let's talk about the quadratic first. Uh, this one, you can use the quadratic formula. If you do, you're going to get x equals 1 plus minus the square root of 3i divided by 2. So the roots of the quadratic are complex. Uh, they are, and they're also special numbers because these two can be written as cosine pi over 3 plus minus i times 
sine pi over 3. In other words, they are, they are the cube roots of negative 1. And that makes sense because if you think about x cubed plus 1 equals 0, so x cubed plus 1 equals 0, you know, x cubed plus 1 can be factored like this. So when you set it equal to 0, x equals negative 1 is one of the solutions. The other two solutions are going to be the cube roots of negative 1 because there's going to be three cube roots of negative 1. Okay, great. So that, that comes from the quadratic. What about the cubic, right? So for the cubic, easy Cardano, right? You can do Cardano's formula or any other formula that you wish, and you're going to arrive at the solutions. Let me go ahead and show you what those solutions look like. So those solutions are going to be kind of interesting. Here's uh, the real solution to R cubic. And apparently the R cubic has one real solution and two complex solutions. And here's the complex solutions. Wow. They look amazing, don't they? Okay, great. Uh, thanks to Wolfram Alpha, I was able to pull those solutions. But if you, even if you applied the Cardano's formula, which we talked about recently, and I'm planning to make a separate video. I know I keep saying that, but hopefully I'll be able to do that anytime soon. Uh, you can solve it. All right, great. So you got the solutions pretty much. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. All right. For our second method, we're going to be using a totally different approach. So obviously not all, you know, quintics are going to be special. Sometimes they are not that special. But here's the thing. This one is missing a lot of terms. We don't have x cubed, we don't have x squared, we don't have the x, so that's good. And we're going to be factoring this into a cubic and a quadratic. Now, we could also do a linear, but we don't know what that's going to look like, so it's easier to break it down into a quadratic and a cubic. So I'll first suppose that this quintic can be written like this. And I'll tell you why I'm thinking that way. So obviously a, b, c are constants here. So since our constant on the left-hand side is negative 1, I kind of thought about, okay, if there is any uh, integer, uh, you know, coefficients, then they have to be 1 and negative 1. But here's the thing. There is another setup that might work, and it's going to be the negative 1 here and the positive 1 with the quadratic. So those two are obviously different ways to do it. And guess what? When you try the first one, it just doesn't work. In the interest of time, I'm going to spare you the trouble, and I'll tell you that the second one is the one that works. And when you distribute this, you're going to get x to the fifth, c, x to the fourth, so on and so forth. To keep a long story short, this is what our quintic is going to look like. After distribution and arranging like terms, you're going to get something like this. x to the fifth plus a plus c, x to the fourth, plus a, c, plus b, plus 1 x to the third plus bc plus a minus 1 x squared plus b minus cx minus 1 equals 0. So that's our quintic. And when you compare our quintic to the original quintic, this one, you're going to notice that most of these coefficients are going to be 0. So for example, this one is not 0, obviously. That's a negative 1. But the coefficient of x cubed is 0. The coefficient of x squared is 0. And the coefficient of x is 0. Obviously, constant terms are also matching. Great. So we get a system of equations. Let's go ahead and write it down. We get a plus c equals negative 1, ac plus b plus 1 equals 0, bc plus a minus 1 is equal to 0, and then b equals c or b minus c equals 0. So that's some system, isn't it? And you can definitely solve it because, and something interesting about the system is that there are four equations, but three variables. So we have more equations than the number of variables, which means we kind of have to check. There might be some inconsistencies. Anyways, again, to keep a long story short, dot, 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 we're going to arrive at a simpler system if you simplify this. And the way I did it was basically you can replace, you know, um, C with B in all of these equations and then eliminate eventually B and come up with an equation or system for A. And this is what we come up with, A squared plus 2A equals 0 and a squared plus 3a is equal to 0. And is the keyword here. And from here we get the following. a is 0 or negative 2. From here we get a is 0 or negative 3. But these two have to be combined with an and. Therefore, we have to look at the 
intersection of these two packets and that gives us a equals zero as the only solution and when you go ahead and plug in a equals zero here you're going to get of course um, by finding a equals zero you're going to find c equals negative one b equals negative one obviously those are going to be found very easily because we know that a plus c is negative one so from there we can find everything and remember our expression was x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus one and we wrote it as uh, the following ax x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus one so a is equal to zero so therefore you're not going to have the x squared but you're going to have x cubed minus x minus one multiplied by x squared minus x plus one nice and this brings us to the end of this video i thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye